I'm gonna be doing some priming on the house, typically on our exteriors. Any priming that we got on siding, trim, anything we're gonna be using um, Rust-Oleum Triple Thick Primer, uh, super high resin content, and it's an amazing primer. Helps glue down peeling edges, um, fills in cracks and stuff. It's a great primer. We typically use it on, on almost every single home that we paint. There's not a lot of priming on this house. I don't need very much. We're probably only gonna be using about a quart. I do like using a Chinex um, filament brush when I'm doing any type of priming because the primer won't stick to the Chinex filament like it will other brushes. So I use a Premier Riverdale. I'm just gonna go around and start doing some of this priming where we sanded. Um, sealing down some of these edges of the peeling paint and priming the bare wood that was you know exposed so um, usually i'll do multiple coats of primer in these areas and i'll prime before i do caulking that way if there's any bare wood it gets primed before there's any caulking and this primer will help prime the bare wood help fill the crack help feather the edges where this peeling paint is oh Definitely want to get anything peeling first that's loose before you do any priming. So I got everything that is loose there. What I'll do is I'll prime it, sand it with a sponge, hit it with the primer again, and then I'll caulk anything that needs to be caulked. One thing I do like, there's other um, forms of this uh, product, um, other brands, the triple thick is tinted white. Um, other brands, it'll dry clear and you won't have any idea where you went. So I like the triple thick because I can tell where I went after it dries. You try to get the edges of the paint, if there's anything lifted up, you know, scrape it off, but once you prime it, it seals it, then we'll sand any of those edges that are lifted, and then we'll reprime it again, and then it'll, they'll be glued down. Corner boards and fascia that are all swollen from water damage, we're gonna wanna just try to get those sealed up as best we can so water doesn't get down inside this fascia and continue to swell it and do damage. This is, again, this looks like wood, but it's not actually wood. It's just ground up wood fiber, primer and glues added and imitation wood grain added to it. Now it's just a simple little tip when it comes to applying my peel stop is I like to wherever I got peeling paint I like to brush it up into the ridge of the peeling paint so it gets up inside there helps smooth out that peeling paint ridge so I'm gonna brush it up I do like to brush it I don't like to roll it Brushing it makes the product more effective, pushes it down the cracks, pushes it where you want to push it, and leaves, leaves it a nice layout to it. Very, very little blistering. Blistering is a very common problem with this siding. Um, it's just not meant to get wet. It's not meant for moisture or heat. But... Things looking good, just a couple little peeling spots, a few little blisters, nothing major, just, just brush right over them. Do have some kind of peeling issues on the gutter up here. The um, peel stop will actually work on metal too. These gutters are actually plastic. Um, It'll work on plastic once super high resin content primer 
very good for filling the spiders have already come back after power washing one day later kind of crazy you got a corner right here that's um i've got some swelling peeling on it it needs to be caulked too so it's good it's always best to do your priming before um, caulking that way your caulking will stick better to a primer than it will to bare wood or even this cardboard material so better better to prime first um, you don't have to it's not a hundred percent necessary but just like I say good practice multiple hornets nests that we're dealing with here's one right here we already sprayed um, one of the interesting things, um, paint wise, you can add a product called bug juice to your paint. Bug juice um, kills flying and crawling insects on your paint and um, will help almost eradicate, eliminate hornets, mosquitoes, flies, spiders, bugs. Last five to seven years, absolutely amazing product. Keeps your paint job looking nice for years you don't get spider webs all over your paint job and so highly recommend it so we're just working on this brick mold down here it's a high side of the house that's not very protected when it rains it snows snow probably gets built up on this um this brick mold you can actually purchase it local hardware store and replace it it's this piece of molding right here it's not too difficult to replace but you can you know make some suggestions to your customer you probably don't even realize stuff like this but um we can to cut the cost just cut this piece out right here just replace a small piece of that brick mold and uh, make it better but um you know there could have been sprinklers you know hitting this um this side of the house right here causing that water damage because this side's not damaged but um always just if you see damage water damage to the house of like this suggest to the customers number one thing is sprinkler systems you know hitting the house um that's we see that quite often and just good customer service would be notify your customer of those type of issues so they can make the necessary corrections to their sprinkler system their downspouts their gutters whatever i'm just going to prime this right here but i'm probably going to be cutting this section out right there and replacing that but i'll throw some primer just on the end because i'm not sure where i'll be cutting it out down to um, this is a pretty common issue you know here in idaho you see down here we got some uh, peeling blistering paint just gonna prime feather those edges and underneath this lap right here we got some water damage this would probably be related to we got a dryer vent right here a lot of moisture coming up the house right here so it's probably causing this damage up underneath this lip right here down here is where we had a little water damage from this pond that was here previously causing paint to peel try to get some of this loose paint off down here before we prime it I got some pretty big cracks right here not big enough to put backer rod in but one of the reasons why i do like using tower tech too is it bonds better than any caulking I've ever ever used spans the gap bigger cracks of any caulking i've ever used and it tools better than any caulking i've used so i really like using tower tech too you know it's a lifetime warranty caulking and I use it on all my exterior repaints. Had a lot of success with it. Least amount of pops of any caulking I've ever had. 
also used also when you start to get to areas like this that the caulking has been pushed out it's best to cut it out and to re-caulk it you don't want that bulge sitting there so we've got a big chunk of caulking right here we can cut that out You're starting to get borderline where you know you'd want a, some backer rod going in there to fill that that's a big enough gap that we should stuff back a rod in there another spot where expansion and contraction has really pushed out a big bead of caulking that's better to cut it out um, this one is probably small enough that it doesn't need back a rod um, and this is where it's better to use a high quality caulking that bonds really well. But if you don't fill that whole crack, it will re-crack again, especially if you use a really cheap caulking. Here's a piece of backer rod right here. Now, you know, if you did fill this up with tower tech and it would actually, you know, bond to both sides. It would expand really well, but if it contracts, it's gonna push out a big bulge of caulking, which is what it looked like before. So it's just best to take stuff in some backer rod in there. This will give your caulking some backing. I just take my knife, cut it off of the end, stuff that in there. Now it's not gonna take nearly as much caulking either to fill. And your crack is gonna have a lot more success. You know, when it comes to expansion and contraction, the, and especially our conditions here in Idaho. I do like, you know, wearing gloves. People ask me, if you get used to wearing them um, caulking you start to learn it's not easy to learn how to caulk with it with them on but once you learn it's nice because you don't get caulking all over your hands keep my hands clean you know throughout the day always check above doors and windows for cracks a lot of times you got cracks can't see down below um, I like to caulk the tops of the windows too you get water coming down get behind the windows a lot of times these windows aren't flashed correctly this window is getting replaced because they're doing a remodel so they're pulling this window out don't need to caulk that one all these windows all these vents everything looks good over here um, sides of doors looks good this one spot looks like we need to caulk this One thing that gets missed a lot is bottoms of door jams. The first several inches right here. Um, you see when I'm training guys, this gets missed a lot. That little section down there. Any nail heads that have broken the surface of the siding, how he's caulk them to this house. Usually that's just about every one of them. Here's a section of caulking that's lose people ask me do i you know cut out all the caulking we usually don't cut out all the caulking unless it needs to be cut out this is a section where it's pretty bad shape so i cut it out just pull it out with my two-edged knife um this is a corner board that needs to be renailed i always get rid of the extra caulking on my hand like do i have any just get rid of it on the siding somewhere. You will never see that ever. 